Hello, and welcome to Education Technology Professionals. I'm Mr. Kirshner, and in this video we're going to be looking at adding a score tracker to a game in Tinker. Now you're probably here because you've been assigned setting up a game in Tinker and been told part of that assignment is to add a score. Now, adding the score variable in Tinker is relatively easy. Adding the way to watch it so we can keep track of it is not as straightforward. In some other block coding sites, you can just add a block that keeps track of it. Um, that is the way we're going to do it in Tinker, but um, it actually involves adding another actor. And again, it's a little, it's a little more complicated. So we're going to go ahead and walk through it. Now, I have created a game, just kind of you know, put one together, uh, sort of as a way to explain or demonstrate how we can add the scores. So let's head on over to Tinker. Um, here you can see the game. It's very simple. I just have a stage and two actors. Uh, whenever you want to add a score, the very first thing you need to do is decide what events, what's going to happen, that's going to change the score. In this case, when we miss the ball with the paddle and the ball hits the bottom edge, we're going to lower the score or reduce the score by one point. And when we hit the ball with the paddle, we will raise the score by one point. So, first thing you want to do is come over here to the variables area of the blocks. And you can see that we've got ways here to change variables, but we don't have any variables to change yet. So the first step is to create a variable. We're going to create one called score. All right, now, because this is a game-wide score, we're not keeping track of it just for one player. We're keeping track of it for the entire game. We want it for all actors. And we do want to reset the variable on stop to zero so that every time the game starts, it starts with a score of zero. Okay, so with that, we have now created our score. And you can see we have a new block here now with the score variable. Now, I had said that we want the score to go up one every time we hit the ball with the paddle, and we want the score to go down one every time the ball misses the paddle and hits the bottom edge. And you'll see I've already got those event blocks here, when touching bottom edge occurs and when touching the paddle occurs. So we're going to go ahead and add our change blocks. We want to change the score by negative one. That is, we want it to go down one when we hit the bottom edge. And we want to change the score by positive one. Uh, we want it to go up one when it hits the paddle. And so now we have the score added. The game will now keep track of it. Every time it misses the paddle, hits the bottom edge, the score will go down one. Every time we hit the paddle with the ball, the score will go up one. But there's still no way to show the score. There's no way to make it visible. So we actually, in Tinker, add a new actor that keeps track of that, but it's unfortunately not under the Add Actors. The way we get to the score display in Tinker is we click on Score. We just click on the block. And now you'll see it shows us the current value, 0, and the default value, 0. Uh, and then we have another button here called Add Watcher. Now when we click on Add Watcher, it will add a new actor. So let's go ahead and click on that actor. And because it's in the middle of the screen, we want to drag it to the upper left-hand corner so it's not in the way. So we'll put our score in the upper left-hand corner. Um, again, we've selected Score Watcher. And now you can see they've already put some code in it for us. Uh, it font controls and the font style, whether it's bold or italics or normal, it's set for bold. We'll leave it there. It's set for uh, 24. And we can go ahead and just leave that set, unless you want to change it. If you want to change the font, change the font size, that's fine. For our purposes, we'll just leave it. Um, in case you have physics on, it has added a physics block, set active on self to false. Uh, that means it's just not going to interact with the other parts of the game. It'll be there where we can see it, um, but it's not going to interfere with the gameplay. And then finally, on forever, it'll be continually checking and displaying the score. Uh, here at the beginning, this is where we tell it how much of the word score we want it to display. Uh, we're saying, please show the first six letters. Of course, score has five letters, so this way we, we see the entire word. Um, and then there's uh, a colon, 
that it's going to insert between that and the score. And then we have this substring property of score of golf ball. We actually don't need all of that. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out and we'll just stick the score there. So now when we click play, uh, the game should keep track of the score and it should show us the score in the upper left hand corner. So let's go ahead and maximize so we can see what we're doing. And I'll click play and we'll see the score there and we can see as we hit the paddle the score goes up by one. And uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and miss this time. And we can see the score going down by one when we miss the paddle and hit the bottom edge. Alright, so that is how we show a score in Tinker. I uh, hope you're having fun with this assignment. I hope you're staying safe and well, and we look forward to seeing you in the class soon.